Hey guys, so I'm on to my third jump in. Let's just go for it. Alright, as usual, I'm just going to look up the rares for these packets. Okay, so in uh, Bewitching, we have the Sun Gold Sentinel. In Educated, we have the Triskaidekaphile. That's the two drop that says if you if you ever have 13 I think at the start of your upkeep if you have 13 cards in your hand you win the game which is quite an interesting and ch challenging alternative win condition and in vampires we have um Andre and Olivia um and I could get I could get any of these. If I got the Sun Gold Sentinel, that would complete my collection of those. So I don't I don't want to get four out of four. I'd much rather get to like three. And that's the basically gonna be the case for the vampires. I think I like the vampires better than the the Triskadeca file. It's kind of an interesting card, an interesting challenge to try and win with that win condition, but um I might I might be more likely to play my vampires. Right, and now I will check out these ones. Okay, so we actually have two packets here from the new set, first of all. Uh, because I've I've only done a bit of drafting of the new set, I'm still I'm still doing uh, planning to do lots more limited. Um, I'm pr it's probably a better idea to go for the older set which is of things which is bloodthirsty uh so I, you but i will mention in resistance you have a chance of getting chandra hopes beacon uh i think you're more likely to get the voldaren thrill seeker uh, and then phyrexian you've got a chance of getting shieldred or the i think grafted butcher so um, probably if I, if I was just going for the most powerful card, I'd pick Resistance to try and get a Chandra. Uh, but I'm going to just try and fill out my collection. That's um, So for that reason, I'm going to go for the Bloodthirsty. And it goes with my vampires quite nicely. And we'll go ahead and play a few games. Well, I'll play till I get a win. Might have a little mini competition, see which deck takes the longest to actually get a win. So this looks fine. We So at one of our rares, we've got Olivia. We've got a nice uh, Mythic. So that's pretty cool. Got our mana for heroes down four, which is cool as well. Early start. Okay. Oh yeah, so this is the uh, the card draw card. Uh, Vampire Spawn, I think. We're, I'm okay just trading this off for a, a Death Toucher if he wants to swing in. Oh, the Rock Priest, very nice, very nice indeed. Uh, I'll just have to do that, I think. So yeah, that will... Uh, that would have been two poison getting through if I let that through. Uh, this thing, yeah, you can pay mana to give something death touch. Uh, so you can give himself death touch. I could use a removal spell, but I want to get on the board. So I'm going to play a f this uh, four drop creature. 
So what he might he might just swing in with his mana open with this guy, and then I probably just have to let it through. Yeah. Because like maybe I can afford to take a bit more poison. That's actually three poison though, because it's sort of toxic two plus one. Oh, the Hourglass Coven. That's literally probably the strongest card in jump in. That's uh, not ideal, <laughs> to say the very least. Because you might think, oh, I've got removal. No, he, he gets three of them. So let's let's see. And that's a lovely on-curve. No, in fact, he ramped it out. <laughs> he got Hourglass Coven on turn five. <laughs> let's just read all of these and see which one I want to blow up. This gives plus one, plus one. Okay. At the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent discards a card. Well, that's that's not very nice. Warlocks you control have Menace. So I can't block any of them because of this one. Uh, yeah. We're very, 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 very dead. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play it out. And I'm going to... I'm just going to try and be a little bit crafty. Okay, no attacks. Because this, I just check, this is instant speed. We can't do much, but... Uh, that's right, I do, I do lose a card. I'll lose a mountain. Okay. Going for it, right. So the trick here, kill the one that is providing menace. Now, uh, I want to kill the one that's making me discard every turn, because that one's horrible. This only gets buffed when it attacks, doesn't it? We're going to try and just make the best of a bad situation. We are, of course, going up to seven poison as well from the Rock Priest. Because I guess, yeah, that came out turn... That was got ramped out turn three and then Coven on uh, turn four. P a pretty good rollout. And he had the one, one death touch as well. <laughs> it almost seems like a constructed deck. Uh, we actually want to... We need this swamp. I'm just thinking about this blood token. Do we want to get rid of it? But um, we, we like this card draw card as well. Oh, yeah. It, it brings something back tapped and attacking. We could bring back a spawn and that would uh, gain us two life. But then we... Oh, yeah. We're going to die to Rock Priest. That is a slight problem. Uh, okay. You're going to get some more card advantage then. I don't want to give you the... Uh, uh, oh, that's the... I think I killed the... Uh, the uh, subsidiary Hag Warlocks. So that's the one that gives Menace. Saravok the Usurper. Okay. Uh, venerated Rock Priest in the deck as well. Love it. Love to see it. Um, don't like discarding cards. Okay. Yeah, you get par one. <laughs> it's a pretty good rollout. Uh, okay, over to my turn. Falcon Wrath Celebrants. So that is a nice big 4 4 creature. It's still going to die to Rock Priest when he gives it Death Touch. Um, I tell you what, we could point a discussion. This does get two blood tokens, though. Okay, we're going to just chump block with a 4-4. Four, four. Does not feel good. But that is that is where we are at at the moment. Oh, he's got a cast down as well. <laughs> no.
Nice. What? Why not? Why not just have everything? So I will die to poison here. It's not like my deck was particularly bad. It was just uh what well, turn f well turn 1 death touch toxic which is always a, a nice start. I thought okay, I can I can handle this. I can trade off with my 3 drop. Um and then it was the ramp creature, the uh, the the mana dude turn 3 rock priest, turn 4 hourglass coven. Which is a bit a bit difficult to deal with, and then when I'm <laughs> I have to resort to chump blocking with a four four, he has cast down, so he, he just can push through the last poison damage. Okay, what do we have here? Two pointed discussions. We can draw into something good. This can so parasitic grasp. My opponent's playing humans. This is uh, this is good removal. Otherwise, on the double black. It's a lot of three drops. Oh good, that's the second swamp. Very happy to see that. Right, I seem to remember this guy. So yeah, he uh, he can draw a card. It might be a very, very good idea to kill this. If I just try and play a blocker, it leaves me open to a removal spell and then he draws a card. So take that out immediately. Okay, big chunky blocker. Remind me what the gluttonous guest does. Okay, when you sacrifice blood tokens, gain one life. All right, I think I I think I'll lead with this one. We don't really want to discard this land, of course, because we're trying to get to six mana. Let's see... Ah, uh, Replication Specialist. Yeah, I ran into this guy before. Pretty good card. I think, uh, yeah, this is Sorcery Speed pointed discussion, so I think... We want to try and hit land drop number six. You know, whilst we're not under too much pressure. And that is a tap land, unfortunately, but we can't have everything. So what I you'd see the little mistake I made there, I played I made my land drop first. I should have remembered, yeah, there's loads of tap lands in these decks. Uh and then I would have been able to play Olivia next turn. But we can still discard something. Uh, perhaps a vampire scrivener. He does have some big flyers, though. That's a pretty, pretty strong air force he's got there. So just think about the implications of bringing back the Scrivener. Because it can get bigger, but the trouble with Bride, 
this thing it will be, will will, will uh, arrive and it'll be swinging in. I think we want to cast the vampire scrivener, but I think we discard a vampire sw uh, spawn here. That's not not a bad target for Olivia if um, we bring it back because it's just doing some direct damage. Okay. Um, we will just play the tap land. If we do use blood tokens here, obviously with tapping mana, we still won't be able to play Olivia. Uh, um, I do very much like the idea of Scrivener potentially getting bigger and being able to challenge his big flyers. I think that might be the way to go. And we'll go next and no attacks and in turn. Nice. Uh, these all soldiers. That can't be a soldier, can it? That's, yeah. Okay, two of them are soldiers. Now that's big enough, it just beats the Glartner's guest. Let's discard something now. I'm thinking... Um, okay, that could be a nice big creature to bring back. Yeah, let's discard the big creature. Gain a point of life, and this one will go up to 3-3. Three, three. No, 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 It <laughs> got to reread the card. Only works during my turn. <sighs> Never mind. Uh, I think just chucking this guy in the way of a 4-7 is, is good. So I'll still take seven in the air. But we're learning about Vampire Scrivener, so that's good. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. Whenever you gain life during your turn, whenever you lose life during your turn, you get a plus one, plus one counter. Okay. Just because Cutthroat Contender is pretty cool, so I can do that once every turn. So... That's nice. Let's test that out now. We lose a life point, but it's it's all for a good cause. Um, now. What's the best thing to bring out? Maybe the vampire spawn just to gain two life. It's obviously going to face plant and die. Whereas this would be an ag this would be aggressive. I'd actually hit my opponent for seven here, but then I wouldn't have a blocker that was big enough to stop his flyers. But if we think about it, we're, we've got a chump blocker on the ground. We're taking seven in the air. I think I'm going to just be aggressive. And the, obviously Scriven is not going to be able to block. So we just swing in like that and that. Bring back the 4-4 four, four Menace. He's got to be worried because that could be another 10 damage he's taking next turn. Okay, he's got one card left. Alright, yeah, he's going to do that. He's got three mana left. 
So if you can blow up Bride, uh, that takes out the Celebrants as well. You have to... This only stays in play as long as you've got a Legendary Vampire. No, he's going in with everything. Fair enough. So... Oh, don't activate the ability. Oh my god. Always forget that. Pass the blockers first. Right. Now, is it 7 damage, or is it more? He has a blocker in the air, okay. Is that enough? Uh, because we're bringing back... Probably the Vampire Spawn doing 2 direct damage. Um... Blood crazed fat for even more damage. Blood crazed socialite. Okay, that could be five damage. So what we do is we discard that with a blood token. Uh, we could pointed discussion as well, just for a bit of fun. Hopefully not losing the game here by doing this, but just gives me a couple more options. Actually gives me a hero's downfall, so we just kill that blocker. This this should be winning. Yeah, nice. You can, yeah, Olivia's, Olivia Crimson Bride could definitely turn things around quite quickly there. Okay, I think I have added that to Dex. Uh, let's claim our, our winnings here. Necrosquito, cool. Now just a quick look at the deck. Right, so, yeah, a couple of one-drops. So you get a 40-card deck, and this is a bit like a draft deck. You, uh, it's quite generous on the land, I've got to say, 18 land. Usually you go for 17 land in these in-draft decks, but uh, I suppose it, you know, it, they tend, these things tend to have a bit of a top end to them. Six drop, three, uh, three five drops. It's interesting that this is almost exactly the... Um, there is this sort of rule of thumb in draft. You go for two one drops, one six drop, three five drops, four four drops. The only difference is you, you usually want seven two drops and six three drops. So I think it's uh, four, five, six... So yeah, it's the other way around here. Well, you've only got five two drops because, of course, you've got the extra land. So that's kind of that's kind of interesting, I think. Um, these decks don't have that much removal, so we saw a parasitic grasp and uh, hero's downfall. There's also a twisted embrace in the deck that can blow something up and lacerate flesh. It's the expensive removal spell. In draft, I probably wouldn't play two. Uh, two of these card draw spells. I have been trying one of them. But as you saw, we we drew both of them in the last game. Uh, and that can be a little bit scary because you're paying, you're paying two life for two cards. It's not something... Uh, there, there we go. That's the other rare we got. Falconrath Forebear. This one... Yeah, 3-1 Flyer for three. Can't block... But whenever it deals combat damage to a player, make a blood token, and then pay black, sacrifice two blood tokens, return Falcon Wrath Forebear from your graveyard to the battlefield. That does seem quite good in a vampire deck. It's a, sort of a stubborn returning uh, creature. Yep, so that's the, that's the, uh, the vampire's deck. Oh, you get a combat trick as well. Stolen Vitality. Anyway, I think that is a video, so uh, thanks for watching.